I'm Steve Ostrom. And I'm Keith Ford. And we're here again at Rock Island Auction Company bringing you some more cool guns from the vault. And what have we got right here, Steve? Today we got the model 53 Smith & Wesson revolver chambered in 22 jet. And for those of you who have not heard of the 22 jet, don't feel bad. This is a centerfire high velocity 22 round made for a Smith & Wesson K-frame revolver. If you look here, the holes are big on the back, but on the front, they're 22 caliber. Basically, it's a 357 Magnum neck down to 22 caliber. And this came about back in the early 1960s, I mean right about 1960, where there was this craze for high velocity revolver cartridges for who knows whatever reason. Um, the Ruger had their 256 Hawkeye um, kind of in that era. And there's a few modifications on this gun that make it very interesting. The big one is, I'm going to cock it here, it has two firing pins. One for center fire and one for rim fire. I'll get to the rim fire in a second. It also has a hammer with a movable piece in here that strikes either one pin or the other, depending on if you're shooting center fire or rim fire. It's the only Smith & Wesson to come with that hand, uh, mm -hmm. hammer, as far as I know. It's got a little uh, movable, articulated piece in there. Yep. And what you could do with this gun is, if you didn't want to shoot 22 jet all the time, here's the box, you could take your inserts. This is a machined insert. This is the shape of a 22 jet case. And you could load that with a 22 long rifle or 22 short or 22 long, whatever. This little piece of the rim is cut away so you can get your fingernail in there to extract the round after you're done. Because if you hit the extractor on this, the whole thing's gonna fly out. And you'll notice this box has room for an extra cylinder. You could order this special from the factory with a rim fire cylinder, either in 22 long rifle. I think you could do 22 Magnum yes, too, 22 right? Yes, 22 Magnum, they had a Magnum so cylinder. So that's where your rim fire uh, function on your hammer would come into play. And I think a lot of these guns got shot with a lot more rim fire than they did with center fire. Mm -hmm. If you've ever heard one of these go off, you might understand why. They're extremely loud. You've got a lot of powder going behind a small bullet in a small tube. That's a really high frequency. That's the uh, ice pick in the ear syndrome, yeah. basically, when they go off. You never shoot this without hearing protection, and double hearing protection is a good, good idea. They came with these nice fitted boxes, typical of the era, with the cleaning materials. These are some extra grips this owner had. But it's a, just a nice little system that really, they weren't produced in great numbers because once everybody shot one, they'd sell it and the next guy would pick that gun up and shoot it for a little while and sell it because uh, it's just not something you take out every day. It's, it's kind of an oddity. Yeah, they're not fun to shoot. But other than that, it's a target grade K-frame. I mean, they shoot like a house of fire. And really nice gun. This one is pristine, as, as many of them you'll find are. They weren't carried daily or anything like that. They weren't used in law enforcement or military, so a lot of them are in really good shape, and you can get them at pretty decent prices, considering how scarce they are. All in all, a really neat piece. Cool. Well, we'd like to thank Rock Island for letting us come out here and go through all their guns and pick out some of the coolest ones that we found. And also be sure and check out Rock Island Auction Company on the web. Thanks again, and be sure and tune in again whenever we bring another gun from, from the, the vault. vault.